rolling, <laughs> cookies and cream. <laughs> ready? Yeah, ready. <laughs> Pat, I'm ready. This week I'm making a mega cake that I've been wanting to make for a long time. I'm making a cookies and cream mega cake. You're welcome. To make this cake, I made four pounds of my ultimate vanilla batter. Then I chopped up some mini Oreos and folded them into that batter. Do you see that right now? There's already cookies and cream in the cake, okay? Oh my gosh, that's so good. It was so beautiful. And you know what's interesting is like cookies and cream is a flavor, but let's be honest, the only cookie people are using is Oreo. Oreo. Nobody's like, oh, gee, does that have oatmeal swirled in the buttercream? Yeah. Mm. No. no. <laughs> you, we know what cookie you're talking about, everyone. I've made three pounds of my chocolate batter, and the first thing I need to do is press an Oreo crust down into my cake pan. So I mix together Oreo crumbs, sugar, butter, melted butter, press them in the pan, and then I poured my chocolate batter over that and baked it all as one. Okay, so this recipe is definitely going on the blog. Uh, well, uh, there's no choice. This recipe is the blog. <laughs> it's called cookiesandcreamit.com. We're just changing okay. the whole. The <laughs> other recipes are quivering as we speak. <laughs> Even simple syrup is worried. Even simple syrup. Okay. I'm gonna this this cook is good. This cook. <laughs> <laughs> this cake is cookies and cream like personified. It's the embodiment of cookies and cream with a decomposed. <laughs> Decompose. Yeah, that's the wrong. Ready? That's not. That's wrong. You mean deconstructed? De yeah. At the same time, it's like a deconstructed version of cookies and cream. Folded in the Oreo cookies to the vanilla. Like, how did it? What did the cake look like? Like just bits of Oreo and all over? Yeah, bits of little bits of Oreo all over. Yeah. And it was really nice because they did it. Sometimes when you fold heavier things into batter, it really sinks to the bottom. They huh. didn't completely sink. So they were speckled within the vanilla cake. So now I have all four layers of cake prepared and ready to be simple syrup. Um, I'm gonna let the simple syrup soak into my layers and in the meantime, I'm going to make some Oreo buttercream. So those same crumbs I used to make the crumb crust, I'm going to fold them into Italian meringue buttercream. This is now the second time in what? A very short while that I have intentionally put crumbs in buttercream. Once I get to the third, we're gonna need to do something about me. Call the authorities. <laughs> I have my Oreo buttercream. I have two packs of double stuffed Oreos because I'm not playing. That when I cut the cake, you'll see them more. I still remember when they invented double stuffed. It was like- wow. it was an event in your life? Well, yeah. I mean, now Oreo has like come so far. They have like every flavor, every, but I remember when they invented double stuffed, I was like, I could have twice the cream. Do you prefer traditional Oreos or double stuff? I think it depends on my mood. In this cake, I definitely prefer double, but if I'm eating an Oreo, I do prefer traditional. Yeah, it's the right ratio. And then I also have some chocolate ganache that is dyed black, because even though Oreos are technically chocolate, they're very dark. And now I can build this mega cake. Starting from the bottom, the first cake I placed down onto my board is the chocolate cake with the Oreo crumb crust. So now I spread on some of my Oreo Italian meringue buttercream, a nice even layer, and I really want to neaten up the sides and make sure that the layer of buttercream is really neat because this is kind of the canvas for where I'm gonna lay on all the double stuffed Oreos. I, I bet you there are paintings of Oreos. <laughs> Guaranteed. So, I line up the Oreos and this is when I feel like cake euphoria because normally when I do stuff like this, in my mind I'm like, okay Yolanda, accept it's not going to work out perfectly. It worked out perfectly. 
without you planning it? My subconscious knew. My subconscious was like, the circumference of 11 Oreos in a circle is equal to, I have no idea what happened, but it worked out and I'm happy. Now, before I add this, the next cake layer, I wanna make sure that that cake layer sticks to the Oreos, but I don't wanna ice over the Oreos and mess up the pattern. So what I'm going to do is put some of my Italian meringue buttercream in a piping bag and pipe little dollops on the surface of each Oreo. Now I can carefully add a layer of my vanilla Oreo cake. Yum. That's what I did, right? Just checking my notes. <laughs> So because this cake is much lighter in color, this is where I'm going to spread my black chocolate ganache. Again, nice even layer, make sure it's really neat at the sides, and then I'm going to repeat my Oreo, my double stuffed Oreo pattern. I'm not alternating the cake layers because I want the crumbs to be on the bottom and then at the very top. So this time I'm going back in with my vanilla Oreo layer. Here's the problem. I need ganache to make sure that that cake layer sticks to the Oreos. And once again, I didn't want to spread ganache on the Oreos and mess them up. I flipped my cake layer over. I iced the bottom of it neatly. And then I really carefully picked it up and flipped it onto the cake. Nobody else gets as excited about this as me. I'm like, oh no, Yolanda, if you miss, the whole cake will be lopsided. I have this whole inner dialogue. And then when it comes time for interview and I announce it, everyone's just like. <laughs> no, Yolanda, that was, that flip was incredibly impressive. Thank you, Jocelyn. Thank you. Tengiz, it's your turn now. Yolanda, that was very interesting. Thank you. Um, <laughs> okay, and then add the final chocolate cake layer with the crumb side up. So you see the metaphor. Is this a, yeah. It's a metaphor for what an Oreo is because there's a cookie sandwiching the goodness inside. This, this cake is so deep. So now it's time to crumb coat and chill this glorious cake with more of the, I know the beautiful thing is, I'm crumb coating and chilling, and I technically, I'm protecting the cake from crumbs, even though I'm using crummy buttercream. Yeah, it's, it's, it's I don't know what to do. And once my crumb coat is chilled, I'm going to ice my cake again with this beautiful buttercream. I just love the way it looks. It reminds me of like concrete. Like it's, it's so beautiful. So nice, I love the way it looks. So I wanna ice it, I'm gonna use a bench scraper to get it as smooth as I can, smooth out the top, and then I'm gonna put it in the fridge to chill and make some ganache to drip. Um, Give me a second, I'll just look at the camera. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna do that the whole interview. Guys, I'm basically making the exact same chocolate ganache that's on the inside, a black chocolate ganache. I just had to make the ganache I used for the filling ahead of time so it was spreadable. But this ganache, I don't want to be spreadable. I want it to be drippable. Ooh, <laughs> drippable. What you wanna do is once the chocolate and cream are ready to be stirred together, when they're still a little bit warm, that's when you add your food coloring. And the reason I'm adding the food coloring to dark chocolate ganache is because I'll need so much less food coloring because it's already dark. I mean, already I've talked about so many of my recipes, vanilla cake, chocolate cake, simple syrup, Italian meringue buttercream, ganache. And I'm so happy to tell you that right now we are offering a free four week course. It's my cake and icing basics program where I walk you through all of these recipes I just mentioned and more step by step. What I wanted to do was just answer all of the questions I get over the last five years about my buttercream, about simple syrup and why you use it, about how to get the perfect batter, and I'm just, I'm so proud of it. I take you through all of my foundations and you get to go through it at your own pace. This really is the beginning of being a great baker and it's completely free. There's a link below where you can sign up for my free cake and icing basics program. So I'm placing this lovely black ganache into a parchment paper piping bag. And what you wanna do is hold the tip right at the top corner of your cake, just slightly 
over the top, okay? Jocelyn's favorite oh, item, <laughs> a parchment paper piping bag. And how you create the drip is you start to squeeze. The more you squeeze, the more your drip will drip down the cake. You squeeze and you move because you just don't want one big blob. And once that's done, you squeeze out the rest of your ganache onto the top center of the cake and then use a small offset spatula to really spread it nice and smooth and bring it out to meet that border you created. I want this ganache drip to set before I decorate the top. So I'm gonna put it in the fridge to chill and in the meantime, I'm gonna take some Oreos up a notch. How do you take Oreos up and notch? Exactly, <laughs> this is the question I asked. I, I studied, uh, I meditated on it, and no, <laughs> really. <laughs> so what I've decided is to melt some uh, pink chocolate wafers, and then I have one of our sprinkle blends, and what I'm gonna do is dip Oreo by Oreo halfway. You know what's great about dipping an Oreo halfway? I'm gonna tell you. I didn't mark each Oreo and make a mark, but, because wow. they say Oreo in the middle, mm. you can use that, like always <laughs> dip to the same letter. You see? <laughs> and before the chocolate sets, sprinkle on your sprinkles. So good. I love sprinkles because they're a noun and a verb. It tells you like what they are and how to apply them. It's true. You know it's what I mean? True. I put more of my Italian meringue buttercream, my Oreo Italian. <laughs> I've always wanted to go to Italy. <laughs> you know what the worst? Um, this is. Do we have time for a cake confession? This is the worst thing. Because often when I'm talking about. Oh, really? Just cut off my confession. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? I'm rolling he, he just, or uh, um, Chengis cut. Like, I didn't what cut the hell, just... Chengis? Why? No, it stops automatically. I didn't cut it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Right. Okay. You <laughs> notice that the minute I was about to pour out my feelings, Chengis took the camera off. So now I'm going to pipe mounds of buttercream on top of my cake, right on top of that black chocolate ganache. When I pipe my mounds, I like to think about my cake like the face of a clock. So I'll pipe like 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and then pipe in between. Uh, oh my gosh, have you seen, I think that there's some app it allows you to take a picture of yourself and then it shows you what you'd look like if you were perfectly symmetrical. Oh, weird. That, that yeah. just sounds depressing. It, so somebody did it to like a bunch of celebrities and whoa. It, they look worse? Yeah, it looks weird. Like you instantly recognize there's something wrong with their face when technically their face has been corrected to be yeah. perfectly symmetrical. Um, okay, <laughs> and off topic. So back to Oreos. <laughs> So I've piped the mounds, I'm really happy with the way they look, and what I want to do is position my beautifully dipped double stuffed Oreos between those mounds, and I want the pink dipped part to sort of stick out. So I'm going to sandwich the non-dipped part between the mounds. I really, I really just love this. It doesn't read as a mega cake to me, because normally when I make a mega cake, like I'm trying to make a statement on the top. Uh -huh. So now I'm gonna just pile Oreos on the top. <laughs> like, In the middle. Not? Yep, I'm gonna pile Oreos on top. Uh, you can use a little bit of the black ganache to help sandwich. Sandwich, I'm sandwiching sandwich cookies. I'm sandwiching sandwich cookies. It's sandwich cookie-ception. So I'm just making uneven I'm so proud of myself. Uneven <laughs> piles of Oreos in the middle, and then I'm going to dress them up with some mini Oreos. Yum. Mm -hmm. When I make mega cakes, this is when I'm like, I can't wait to cut into this. Yeah. Mainly because I just wanted to see like that the Oreos stayed in place and look uh -huh. neat. And they do. <laughs> so how did it taste? Oh my gosh. 
We almost had an embarrassing chocolate peanut butter moment here. Like I was drooling. Really? Yeah, it was just so good. Would you choose cookies and cream yes. or chocolate and peanut butter? No, I'd choose cookies and cream. Really? Yeah, it was just so good. Can't get enough cake? Check this out. Here's my cake confession. Often when I'm sitting here telling you guys how I made a cake, I've already made that cake, but I'm in the middle of making a different cake. And the cake I'm making now is stressing me out. And I'm just thinking about what a lovely time I had making this cookies and cream cake. I'm reminiscing. 